Hey everyone, a very good evening to all of you. I hope all of you are preparing really hard for your examination. And this is the session that is going to help you in your preparation only. So first of all, let's begin the session by you telling me whether I'm clearly audible to all of you or not. Quickly tell me guys whether I'm clearly audible or not. Okay, I guess the people are asking me about the duration of the lecture. That means you guys are, uh, you can hear me properly. Okay, so okay. So I believe that I am clearly audible and I am beginning with the session. So United States of India was asking me whether this session is going to be a three hour long session or not. So believe me, this is not going to be a three hour long session. But yes, this is going to be a very worthful session for all of you. Okay, so let's begin uh, the January spotlight revision. Aap sabko ye baat to pata hai that you have 80 questions in your phase one from the general awareness and do remind this fact that your general awareness is not only the current affairs this includes the broader sense of things okay for example if a uh, state news is there so you may be asked these state related static facts and i'm going to discuss all these things in this session so without wasting any time let's quickly begin In the meanwhile, you all can tell me how is your preparation going. I hope you have preparation is going well. In the comment section, mein you can tell me. Uh, is my audio too low for all of you? Because the Joda sisters is saying audio, but ma'am, please increase the volume. So, okay, I will try to increase my volume. Uh, I hope that my volume is clear in case you feel that i'm not clearly audible please let me know i'm going to check the comments again and again in the middle of the video so that i can uh, so that the video quality is proper okay manjeet is asking are we going to complete the january spotlight in this session only so no manjeet we have already provided you the timetable and according to the timetable this is the first session of january okay Okay, thank you so much guys for letting me know that the audio is fine. Okay, so I hope all of you are aware about the mobile application. So let's quickly begin with the crash course. I'm just going to inform you about it a little bit and then we will move on to the questions directly. So here we have our crash course and you all know crash course is for making you clear the examination. Okay, now you have approximately 60 to 65 days in your hands. So prepare really hard and do not complain about the things which you haven't got because do remember कि सीढ़ियाँ उन्हें मुबारक हो जिन्हें छत तक जाना है आपकी मंजिल आसमान है रास्ता आपको खुद बनाना है जिन जगहों पे आपको चीज़ें नहीं मिल रही हैं वहाँ आपको अपने आप से एफर्ट लगाना है और वैसे तो हम हैं ही वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू द क्रैश कोर्स एंड आल्सो द मेंटरशिप सेशंस ओके सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर अबाउट द मेंटरशिप सेशन्स वेर एन वी प्रोवाइड यू दी वन टू वन पर्सनलाइज्ड weekly timetable also and also we address your grievances okay so do not forget to join the mentorship mentorship sessions because this is a golden opportunity at this point of time for the students okay so i hope we are good to go so let's begin with the first question where will the british indian army memorial be established so here guys it will be established in scotland at glasgow okay i hope glasgow must be reminding you of something so that something is cop26 which happened in 2021 okay and in this cop26 only prime minister gave the panchamrit target okay i hope you remember those five targets these are very important targets and in case you remember those targets can any one of you tell me those targets in the comment section uh basically the live chat then we are talking about the cop26 of unfccc so let me also remind you of the other cops okay so cop27 which was held in 2022 it was held in egypt cop28 
which is going to be conducted in 2023 in November this year. So do remember it will be uh, held in UAE, Dubai. Dubai is going to host the COP28 of UNFCCC. And also remember this thing that Australia has won the bid to host the COP29 of UNFCCC in 2024. Now these facts are very important. Any of these facts can be asked from you directly. Okay. Now one more thing we are talking about uh, Scotland. So I hope all of you remember that the United Kingdom comprises of four individual units. We have England, we have Scotland, we have Wales and we have Northern Ireland. Okay. Each of these countries or you can say sub nations have their own capitals. England ki capital is London. Scotland's capital is Glasgow. Okay. Uh, then we have Wales capital which is Cardiff and we have Northern Ireland's capital which is Belfast. So guys these facts are also important because I already mentioned in the beginning of the session that nowadays RBI is also asking you the macro level questions okay the RBI is not restricted to the current news itself it is asking you the questions from the broader general awareness so for that you need to be aware of these facts. Okay let me see how many of you have written the Panchamrit targets okay 2017 net zero very good okay then we have the con 500 gigawatt renewable energy target absolutely okay then we have other targets also and i'm going to wait for all of you to mention those targets in the comment section below and in case you don't remember those targets so this is your homework guys you need to cover the panchamrit targets yes carbon sink manayenge of 1 billion tons and we are going to increase the uh, uh, decrease the emission intensity of our GDP. Can any one of you tell me that by what percent we are going to reduce it? Okay, by 45% from 33% which we have set. Okay, I'll try to speak a little louder. Okay. Mobile, mobile. Um, just wait for it, guys. Just wait for two minutes. I'm going to adjust the volume. Okay. Just wait for it. Okay, just I hope guys I'm audible to all of you. Okay, so Nilesh Surya Vanshi is saying it's fine. Uh, in case if one or two students are facing this problem of audio guys, please use your headphones because I cannot speak uh, louder than this. Okay. Okay, okay. Chaliye. If it is fine, then I am also fine with this. So let's move on to the next question of today. How many Vande Bharat Express trains are operational as of Jan 2nd, 2023? Okay, so understand guys this question because this question is a little tricky question. Why I am saying tricky? The reason is that uh, by January 2nd, 2023, we had eight um, Vande Bharat trains, Vande Bharat Express trains operational, but this number is increasing day by day. Recently in the month of April, the Prime Minister flagged off another Vande Bharat Express in Chennai and in Kerala. Okay, so this number is increasing day by day and you have to keep a track of this number only in the month of your examination. For example, towards the end of June, what you can do is you can search for the Vande Bharat Express trains running in India, operational in India. Okay, that would do. And as far as this question is concerned, so in my opinion, you can skip this question. Don't try to remember this question. Okay. 
वॉट इज द टारगेट ऑफ द अमृत भारत स्टेशन स्की ओके सो हियर गाइज थाउजेंड स्टेशन इज द राइट आंसर एक्चुअली देर इज मोर देन थाउजेंड स्टेशन रेलवे स्टेशन विच आर बींग टारगेटेड अंडर द अमृत भारत स्टेशन स्कीम एंड वॉट इज द टारगेट और यू कैन से ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द स्कीम द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस स्कीम इज टू रेनोवेट और यू कैन से rejuvenate the infrastructure of the railway stations okay can any one of you tell me that in which years union budget was this scheme announced this is your question do tell me Moving on to the next question, Union Minister Shri Anurag Thakur has released the official Government of India calendar for the year 2023. Mission Life is the theme of which month? So here, guys, July is the right answer. Now, what is the news? If you have read the January Spotlight so far, you must have recalled the news. In case you haven't read the Spotlight so far, let me tell you the news is that we have the official calendar for the year 2023. and what do we mean by the official calendar this means that every month the government of india is going to conduct such activities which align with a specific theme okay for example we have shikshit bharat as the theme of the month of april we have skill india as the theme of may we have fit india hit india as the theme of june because in june we have international day of yoga as well on 21st june okay so keeping in mind that we have kept fifth, uh, fit india hit india as the theme of june july we have mission life so this calendar is very very important any month can be asked from you in the examination so isko to aapko ghol ke pee jana hai isko ratna hai bahut acche se because you can be asked any month theme as far as the mission life is concerned so let me tell you that uh, you must have uh, you must have read about the mission life that it is the life for environment life stands for life for environment and the basic idea of this uh, uh, initiative is to increase awareness among the people so that they adopt sustainable uh, uh, measures and sustainable lifestyle so that is the basic idea of mission life now one thing that is of utmost important and that thing is that yugal joshi who is a member of niti ayog he is the director of this mission life and this fact is very very important okay do remember india will assume the chairmanship of plenary of the vasinar arrangement for one year during 26 annual plenary of the vasinar arrangement to be held in vienna austria the 42 member vasinar arrangement is a voluntary export control regime that monitors transfer of conventional weapons and dual use goods when did india join the group now when we know that india is going to hold the chairmanship of this arrangement this question is a very obvious question so when did india join this arrangement india joined it in 2017 now this is the same year in which india joined sco okay so 2017 is a very important year as far as the joining of india is concerned in international organization as far as the vasinar arrangement is concerned so i hope you know that this is the agreement in which we have 42 member countries and the basic objective of this agreement is to control the export of weapons but when was this arrangement ke, uh, come into existence so it came into existence in 1996 do remember and vienna austria is the headquarters of this arrangement theek okay? hai so these facts are important which state has uh, given the industry status to the tourism sector in the state so here guys assam is the right answer now you must be wondering when you must have read it in the spotlight also or otherwise also you must be wondering that why does the state give such a status to the sector the basic idea behind this move is that when a specific sector gets the industry status they get Uh, relaxation on the tariffs okay for example electricity tariff water tariff etc etc so whatever is the current rate that is being charged from the commercial units that rate will not be charged from the industries and when we have got the industry status for the tourism sector this means that all the units 
functioning in the tourism sector will have to pay less tax okay so that is the benefit and uh, when the government has given this sector this industry status this means that this sector is going to boom okay which article of the indian constitution provides for the delimitation of the lok sabha seats after the completion of census so here guys article 82 is the right answer first of all let me tell you where does this question come from so this comes from assam assam has set up its delimitation commission and uh, the commission is going to bifurcate the constituencies and in the light of this news this question has been framed so do remember article 82 specifies the delimitation and one most important thing is that at the national level the last census was set up in 2001 and the next delimitation commission okay so this was the delimitation and the next delimitation commission will be set up in 2026 okay so do remember this thing nandini is the brand of which states milk cooperative so here karnataka is the right answer now what is the news exactly the news is that home minister and also the cooperation minister amit shah launched a mega dairy in mandya okay mandya is a place in karnataka so this is the news and along with this mega dairy's inauguration one mou was also signed so this mou was signed between nandini and amul and the basic idea of this mou is to uh, open primary dairies in the state okay so that is the basic idea of this mou so this is the news i hope you are able to recall these news and i have written everything here and also remember the mega dairy was developed at at the cost of rupees 260 crore and it is going to process 10 lakh liter of milk per day this is a huge quantity which is going to be uh, processed in one dairy okay uh and also remember that they are going to establish primary dairies in every village of karnataka in the next 3 years the national dairy development board and the ministry of cooperation will work to establish primary dairy in every panchayat of the country in the next 3 3 years okay so at the country level also this work is going to take place and the stakeholders would be the national dairy development board and the ministry of cooperation but if we talk about the specific state of karnataka then we have nandini and amul opening up the primary dairies in every village okay so do remember these two different facts question number 9 yes devanshu milk bank for orphans has been opened in uttarakhand okay so that question is also covered amazing okay uh, dipika you will get the telegram channels link in the description of this session and right now just focus on the questions guys because this time period which we are getting is very precious okay uh question number 9 is indian army has received a 3d printed house dwelling unit which is a disaster resilient structure that com complies with zone 3 earthquake specifications and green building norms where is the unit established so this unit has been established in ahmedabad containment okay so ahmedabad cant is the right answer can any one of you tell me that which company has developed this 3d printed dwelling unit for the army this is your question quickly tell me the answer yes of course 3d post office has also been inaugurated in bangalore which is the first post office first 3d printed post office in india very good mes military engineering services it has uh, constructed this first 3d printed dwelling unit for the indian army question number 10 which countries are separated by the strait of hormuz so iran uae and oman these three countries are separated hence the right answer is option e okay such type of options often confuse us so please pay attention to the options and mark the correct one so this is guys the strait of hormuz 
okay this is the location and it is a very strategic location because majority majority of the natural oil and gas sorry natural gas and oil is supplied through this route only okay to the world that is why it is very very important which iit host the drdo industry academia ramanujan center of excellence so here guys iit madras is the right answer and the purpose of this center of excellence is to boost the research environment in the drdo related activities under which scheme is the prajwala challenge launched by the union government so guys here the right answer is day nrlm that is national rural livelihood mission and i don't think that there is any need for me to tell you that this scheme is very very important you already know this it is a very flagship uh, it is a flagship scheme of the central government so it is your responsibility to cover it very thoroughly okay now one more thing that i want to tell you here is that prajwala challenge has been launched in order to transform the rural uh, rural india okay uh, through innovative technologies but there is a fact associated with this challenge and the fact is that every winner the top 5 each and every winner in the top 5 will get rupees 2 lakh as the prize money and this can become a direct question in the exam which bank has collaborated with india accelerator to launch the i3 launch pad a program created to nurture and co innovate with the startup ecosystem in india so this i3 launch pad has been launched along with icici bank i3 stand for three institutions which are involved in this launch pad first is this india accelerator second is icici bank and third is infosys okay so these three organizations are collectively involved in this launch pad program recently national commission for indian system of medicine and the central council for research in ayurvedic sciences the two insti institutions under the ministry of ayush have launched smart initiative to boost scientific research in priority healthcare research areas through ayurvedic colleges and hospitals what does s stand for in the full form of smart so here guys s stands for scope option e is the right answer now it is your task quickly tell me the full form of smart what is the full form i also find these full form questions very very boring very obnoxious these questions are very irritating whenever the full forms are asked but but these are the areas which can help you score good marks because if there is a question on the full form and you have remembered the full form then you are there okay so scope for ma mainstreaming ayurvedic research in teaching programs very good this is the right answer this highlights ki aap logo ki taiyari chal rahi hai achhi very good okay which university will host the 108th indian science congress so rtm nagpur university is the right answer now what is the theme the theme is science technology for sustainable development and women empowerment okay even if you remember the keywords in the theme that will suffice for the exam okay science technology sustainable development women empowerment that much these are the three keywords that you need to remember from this theme national campaign on rise that is rising india through spiritual empowerment was organized by the brahm kumaris at mount abu rajasthan the foundation stone of the brahm kumaris silence retreat center was laid recently where will the center be developed so it will be developed in secunderabad i hope uh, that you are aware of this fact that secunderabad and hyderabad are known as the twin cities okay so if in case there is a question in the examination that which city is known as the twin city of hyderabad then you should be aware of this fact that it is secunderabad okay 
वेयर इज द सीओम ब्रिज लोकेटेड सो अरुणाचल प्रदेश गाइज इज द राइट आंसर वेन एवर देर आर एनी ब्रिजेस वेन एवर देर इज एनी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चरल डेवलपमेंट अलॉन्ग साइड द बॉर्डर इट बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो डू रिमेंबर क्रोएशिया हैज ज्वाइन द शेंजन एरिया अ टर्म यूज फॉर कंट्रीज इन यूरोप विच हैव अबॉलिश्ड वीजाज अक्रॉस देयर बॉर्डर्स अलाउंग देयर रेजिडेंट्स टू मूव फ्रीली How many of the European Union countries are a part of this grouping? So here, guys, twenty-three is the right answer. Okay, now here I'll take one minute to explain certain things, and then we will move on to the next question. First of all, after the Brexit, we have twenty-seven members, but take a minute. Now we have one more country applying to get into EU, and do you know which country is that? It is Croatia. Yes, Croatia has applied for the membership of European Union, and if it gets the membership, it is going to become the twenty eighth member of European Union. Okay, so that is one fact that you should be aware of as far as Croatia is concerned, except for the geographical and static facts related to the country. Whenever any country is there in the question or in the news, it is your uh, unspeakable or I should say implicit responsibility to cover the static facts related to that country. now coming back to the news as far as shenzhen area is concerned so it is basically a shenzhen agreement okay which was signed twice first in 1985 then in 1990 okay and both these agreements were signed at the same place that is shenzhen shenzhen is actually a place name and not the name of just an agreement okay so this shenzhen area actually is located in luxembourg okay and if we uh, consider the meaning of the shenzhen area as far as the agreement is concerned so shenzhen area is basically the area of the 20 23 countries which have let their borders open okay so no visa is required for the members of these 23 countries to move into each other's territory that is the basic idea of a shenzhen area uh, nation okay i hope these many facts are clear let's uh, move on to this slide so this slide shows you the eu members okay and clearly you can see that uk is not a part of it but soon croatia can become a part of it okay let me zoom it out okay croatia has already been shown as a member country as of june uh, 22 2022 but let me tell you that the process of inclusion of croatia has not been completed yet so do not consider croatia as the 28th member of eu as far as no clarification is there moving on to the next question who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of bandhan banks jahan bandhan waha trust marketing campaign so sort of ganguly is the right answer as far as the banks are concerned you need to remember everything which is there in the news related to the bank okay even if it is a marketing campaign even if it is a new appointment of a brand ambassador or a new appointment in the board of the bank itself everything is important because this is the banking regulators examination okay now quickly tell me the tagline of the bandhan bank and the chief of the bank quickly tell me who is the md and ceo of bandhan bank and what is the tagline moving on to the next question until you give me the answer uh okay so who has been appointed as the state icon of bihar by the election commission of india so here guys methli thakur who is basically a folk singer and uh, for uh, recently she has become very famous so she has been appointed as a state icon of bihar by the election commission of india and what is the purpose of an icon to spread awareness about election so that the voter turnout uh, turnover ratio becomes good okay now as far as the election commission of india is concerned so there are certain facts that you should be aware of first chief election commissioner is rajiv kumar then these are the two other election commissioner do remember their names anup chandra pande and arun goyal election commission is mentioned in the article 324 okay everything of the election commission is mentioned in article 324 and the election commission was constituted in 1950 so these are some of the facts that you should be aware of okay which company has launched its second satellite named pushpa alpha on a falcon 9 rocket to monitor weather 
so dijin uh, dijantra digantra is the right answer okay india has taken over the chairmanship of asian pacific postal union from january 2023 the announcement was made in the 13th appu congress in bangkok in september the union is an intergovernmental organization of 32 member countries of the asia pacific region who is the current secretary general of appu obviously india has taken over the chairmanship so the secretary general belong would belong to india only so who is that person it is vinay prakash singh okay now let's have a look at the organization so guys it is very evident from the name itself that this particular union is going to cater to the asia pacific region okay but there is a very interesting fact attached to this union and that is that it is a, a, sub, a specialized agency of the universal postal union itself so universal universal postal union is a specialized agency of the un and this appu works under the aegis of this union particular union okay so do remember this fact as well 32 member countries are there in this uh, organization bangkok is the headquarters vinay prakash singh is the current secretary general and he is going to retain this post till 2026 okay tab tak aapka is attempt mein ho jaye to bahut achhi baat hai agar next attempt bhi lagta hai exam ke liye to bhi uh, yahi rehne wale hain secretary general and i hope ki aap jitne bhi log abhi ye session dekh rahe hain kisi ka bhi next attempt na lage sabka isi attempt mein clear ho jaye and for that you need to work hard okay aise hi nahi hoga प्रिपेयर करना पड़ेगा अच्छे से और अगर आप इस टाइम को लाइटली ले रहे हो तो प्लीज मत लो ये बहुत गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी है एंड आल्सो रिमेंबर कि फेज टू के लिए आपके पास सिर्फ ट्वेंटी डेज है सो यू हैव टू अडॉप्ट एन इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच वेर इन यू आर गोइंग टू कवर फेज टू एंड फेज वन इन दिस टाइम पीरियड ओनली यू हैव टू मंथ्स इन योर हैंड सो प्रिपेयर बोथ द फेजेज टूगेदर एंड प्रिपेयरिंग बोथ द फेजेज टूगेदर इज ओनली गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन फेज वन ओनली why because in phase 1 you have static questions also which are from the static economics you have the questions from the esi current you have questions from the finance current also so if you take phase 2 and phase 1 hand in hand then your journey is going to be very very smooth now coming back to what we were discussing so universal postal union headquarter burns switzerland current director general is this person 192 countries 1874 establishment at which airport is the intelligent tray retrieval retrieval system established so mopa international airport in goa is the right answer okay first of all do remember it is a greenfield airport i hope all of you are aware of these terms greenfield and brownfield so just know this fact that greenfield and brownfield terms are used for the infrastructure projects if the project is already developed and it is uh, being developed from the mid stage then it will be called a brownfield project and if it is being developed from the scratch then it would be called as a greenfield project okay an example of brownfield is for example if the airport is already developed and a new terminal is being developed in the existing airport that project would be called a brownfield but this mopa international airport was built from the scratch okay so that is why it is a greenfield but guys here i have a surprise for you did you know that there is a term called bluefield how many of you did knew bluefield term quickly tell me okay so blue field basically is a term used for it projects okay blue field projects are not in the infrastructure sector these are the projects in the it sector and these are basically the hybrid projects okay wherein the company does not switch over to a new project or new software completely it uses the old software and also switches on to the new software and obviously we are not going into the depth of the blue field because that is not related to the news that is not going to be asked but yes as far as general awareness is concerned you should be aware of such a term okay that this kind of a term exists in the market 
मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वेयर इज दर्ल्ड फर्स्ट पामली मैनुस्क्रिप्ट म्यूजियम इस्टेब्लिश सो हियर गाइज इंडिया इज द राइट आंसर सो वी हैव अ वेरी रिच हिस्ट्री ऑफ लिटरेचर आर्ट राइटिंग एक्सेट्रा सो देर फोर आउट ऑफ ऑल द ऑप्शन इंडिया इज द राइट आंसर ओके सो डू रिमेंबर दिस इन सच अ मैनर कि हम काफ़ी रिच हैं एज फार एज आर कल्चर इज कंसर्न आर आर्ट इज कंसर्न लिटरेचर इज कंसर्न एंड दैट इज वाई वी हैव द मैनुस्क्रिप्ट म्यूजियम इज वेल ओके सो वेर इज इट बींग डेवलप्ड और वेर इज इट लोकेटेड इन इंडिया सो इट इज लोकेटेड इन थिरुवनंतपुरम केरला ओके सो लोकेशन भी याद रखना वॉट इज द बजट ऑफ द नेशनल ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मिशन सो नाइनटीन थाउजेंड सेवन फोर्टी फोर करोड़ रुपी इज द राइट आंसर एग्जैक्ट अमाउंट याद रखना बिकॉज नेशनल ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मिशन इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो पहले मैं आपको इसके सब स्कीम्स बताती हूँ सो देर आर टू सब स्कीम्स विद इन द नेशनल ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मिशन फर्स्ट इज स्ट्रेटेजिक इंटरवेंशन फॉर ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ट्रांजिशन प्रोग्राम विच इज कॉल्ड साइट एंड अगेन इट बिकम्स अ कंप्लीट फुल फॉर्म इट सेल्फ साइट की फुल फॉर्म कैन बी आर्स फ्रॉम यू इन द एग्जामिनेशन सो डू रिमेंबर स्ट्रैटेजिक इंटरवेंशन फॉर ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ट्रांजिशन प्रोग्राम स्ट्रैटेजिक इंटरवेंशन फॉर ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ट्रांजिशन प्रोग्राम साइट वन कॉम्पोनेंट ओके वन सब स्कीम सो इट विल बेसिकली फंड द डोमेस्टिक मैनुफैक्चरिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलाइजर्स एंड प्रोड्यूस द ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ओके सो वट विल बी डन अंडर द साइट कॉम्पोनेंट इलेक्ट्रोलाइजर्स विल बी डेवलप्ड ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब्स इज द सेकेंड स्कीम अंडर द ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मिशन सो अंडर द ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हर्ब्स एज द नेम इट सेल्फ इज वेरी क्लियरली स्टेटिंग इट आउट दैट द स्टेट्स एंड द रीजन्स कैपेबल of supporting large scale production and utilization of hydrogen will be identified and developed as green hydrogen hubs implementing agency sorry ministry is new and renewable ministry now let's move on to the targets which are very very important okay i hope the targets are clearly visible okay so at least 5 million metric tons of green hydrogen ki annual production we are aiming at annually producing 5 million metric tons of green hydrogen 60 to 100 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity 125 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity for the green hydrogen generation okay this means that we are going to develop 120 gigawatt of 125 gigawatt of solar wind or any other kind of renewable energy so that we can put this renewable energy for the electrolysis and we can generate green hydrogen okay total outlay we have covered 744 19744 crores 1 lakh crore rupee worth of saving will be done through this green hydrogen mission okay because we are at present dependent on oil natural gas for generation of electricity for running the Uh, vehicles etc and if we are able to uh, shift to the green hydrogen then obviously we can cut down on the imports then 50 million metric ton of co2 annual emission will be averted because right now we are generating electricity from uh, the fossil fuels then we will be able to generate it from the hydrogen itself okay 6 lakh jobs will be created 8 lakh crore rupee investment would be attracted by the green hydrogen sector okay that is why this sector is very very important and this mission itself is very crucial okay if you don't get a question on this in the phase 1 i am sure you can expect a question in your phase 2 esi and it is it would not be a very shocking thing if you get a descriptive question on this mission okay so prepare it from that perspective as well question number 26 how much amount has been approved by the union cabinet under the central sector scheme broadcasting infrastructure and network development which is bind in short form again bind ka short form bhi pucha ja sakta hai so uh, how much is the outlay so the outlay is guys 2500 crore now let me just tell you that under the bind scheme the prasar bharti would be reconstructed or basically the infrastructure would be developed for the prasar bharti uh, you can say organization which runs all india radio and your doordarshan channels so this particular scheme is for prasar bharti which state organized the octave 2023 northeastern cultural festival so tamil nadu is the right answer and uh, this is basically to boost the 
इंटर स्टेट रिलेशन ओके सो इट इज इन लाइन विद द एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत विजन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट वॉट इज द कैपिटल ऑफ क्रोएशिया सो जेगरेब इज द कैपिटल कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू टेल मी द करेंसी ऑफ दिस कंट्री ओके वॉट इज द करेंसी बिकॉज देर वॉज अ वेरी आई वुड से प्रोमिनेंट न्यूज रिगार्डिंग द करेंसी एज वेल सो क्विकली टेल मी द करेंसी ऑफ क्रोएशिया yes euro how much stake has sbi mutual fund acquired in the equitas small finance bank so here 9.99% is the right answer and such type of questions are asked in the exam so prepare a fact sheet sheet for yourself especially for such bank related numerical facts which bank has launched the first of its kind digital solutions for exporters to provide finances and other facilities to exporters without any delay to improve their operational efficiency so here icici bank so icici bank has so far been new in news for two reasons first is i3 launchpad and the second is this digital solutions for exporters okay so do remember icici banks static facts as well for example the headquarter the current chief the tagline of the bank and all the news for which it is in the news okay so all the current affairs related to the bank in january 2023 varanasi kant railway station has been awarded a five star eat right station certification by the food safety and standards authority of india for providing quality and nutritious food to passengers In light of this statement, how many eat right railway stations are located in India at present? Again, a tricky question. Why? Because the facts are a little bit. I would say, uh, the facts create confusion. Why? Let me tell you. First of all, do remember that when this news came, there were seven eat right station. But re recently, when I was preparing for this session, I found out that at present we have nine railway stations which have got the eat right station tag, and I have attached the link of the news article as well. Okay, so these are the apparently the stations which have got the eat right station tag. Varanasi, Anand Vihar Terminal, Chhatrapati, Mumbai, Vadodara, Chandigarh, Bhopal, Bhuvneshwar, Kanpur. Okay, or in no ke no stations ke naam apko yaad hone chahiye because first of all the number is very less. Secondly, Eat Right Station is a flagship scheme of F S S A I. Okay. One more thing that in February only we have the first Eat Right Metro Station also, and that metro station is Noida's. Sector fifty one metro station. Okay, so it is India's first eat right metro station, which has got the tag in February twenty twenty three only. Where is India's first in vitro fertilization mobile unit for animals inaugurated? So Amreli, which is in Gujarat, is the right answer. Which institute houses the National Genome? editing and training center so national agri food biotechnology institute which is in mohali punjab okay so this institute has recently established this center how much lay, uh, outlay has been sanctioned for the schemes of ministry of development of the north eastern region for 2022 to 23 to 25 to 26 so here guys the right answer is 12800 crore now the actual amount is 8000 12800 something point something okay so the actual amount is complex so do remember the round figure okay because round figure would suffice your preparation and i don't think that the exact amount would be asked from such kind of a news so in this case you can remember this much only this would suffice your preparation now on that note quickly tell me who is the current minister of development of the north eastern region okay so anirudh bharadwaj and many students Nil nilmoni das has also written 12882.2 crore rupees again this is a tricky um, amount yes g kishan reddy is the current minister 
हाउ मेनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट आर कवर्ड इन दी प्रधानमंत्री नेशनल अप्रेंटिसशिप मेला जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री टू फोर्टी टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट आर कवर्ड ओके विच स्टेट हैज लॉन्च द सी एम सुखाश्रय सहायता कोष फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग हायर एजुकेशन टू द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ नीडी पीपल सो हियर गाइज हिमाचल प्रदेश इज दी राइट आंसर सो बेसिकली द पुअर चिल्ड्रन विल गेट द मनी फ्रॉम दिस कोश विच इज बेसिकली अ फंड एंड फ्रॉम दैट मनी दे आर गोइंग टू स्पॉन्सर देयर हायर एजुकेशन ओके सो डू रिमेंबर दीज टू थ्री पॉइंट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल पुअर पीपल सेकेंडली हायर एजुकेशन के लिए है एंड थर्डली हिमाचल प्रदेश इज द स्टेट Which bank has partnered with Open in January 2023 to provide a fully native digital current account journey for its customers, including SMEs, freelancers, homepreneurs, influencers, and more? So, what is the right answer here? The right answer is Axis Bank. Okay, Bharti ka naam zindagi is the tagline of this bank, and uh, Rakesh. Makhija is the current chairperson of this bank. Do remember, Amitabh Chaudhary is the MD and CEO of this bank. And the basic idea of this uh, news or the basic crux of this news is Open is the organization. Open and Axis Bank together launch the digital current account facility. Okay, for the home preneurs, freelancers, uh, influencers, etc. When is the World Day of War? orphans observed so january 6 is the right answer there was no theme for this day how much is the estimated real gdp for 2022 to 23 as per the nso's first advance estimates of national income at both constant and current prices for the financial year fy23 Okay, so what is the right answer? The right answer is this. Okay, one fifty seven point six zero lakh crore. I hope you know that there are two kind of GDPs. First is our real GDP, that is the GDP at constant prices, and another one is the nominal GDP, that is GDP at current prices. Okay, so current prices wala GDP is calculated uh, on the basis of the current price. Okay, the price of the current year. Real GDP is calculated. on the basis of 2011 to 12 prices okay so this is the base year do remember right now the base year has not been changed it is the same okay there were talks that they are going to change the base year but the change has not taken place now guys these are the figures and this entire table is very crucial why first of all in both the phases you can be asked any question out of this secondly you can cite the data from this table in any of your descriptive answers if the question is on economy or the growth of india okay so for that perspective also do remember the data and always remember the facts always enhances and substantiate your descriptive answers so try to remember certain facts not every kind of fact but certain facts are relevant so this is one of them every kind of data which is provided in this table be it 2021 or 22's data or the current year's data i mean the latest financial year's data who has been appointed as the new ceo of the paytm payments bank so surender chavla is the right answer india's first coal gasification based tulchar fertilizer plant will be ready by ready for commissioning by october 2024 at ongul uh, odisha this would be the fifth urea producing indigenous plant of india in july 2022 the government has set a target of eliminating urea imports by dash so a very important question i would say because it is ta talking about the target of the government so by which year does the government aim to eliminate the urea imports 2025 very crucial important um, i would say information this is now let me just tell you a little bit about the fertilizer subsidy burden of india okay i hope you are aware about the numbers so i'm just tell, going to tell you the fertilizers subsidy india gives the fertilizer subsidy the government gives the subsidy on okay so dap is written in caps because it's a short form uh, it's an acronym for the diammonium phosphate okay then we have 
these are the four types of fertilizers on which india indian government gives subsidy and out of these four these two amount for the maximum amount of subsidy uh, that is given by the government okay so that is why the government is focusing on eliminating their imports because India खुद इतना production नहीं करता urea and DAP का we import a lot और I would say majority of the consumption is done through imports only so the government is planning to eliminate the use of these two fertilizers in order to reduce its fertilizer burden and for that recently ifco has produced the nano urea you must have heard about the nano urea and nano dap also okay which is diammonium phosphate npks stand for nitrogen phosphorus potash sulfur and mop stands for muriate of potash so these are the different type of fertilizers and these are the recent developments that have taken place as far as the fertilizers are concerned so do remember nano dap has been recently launched yeah uh, i was covering this news today itself in the document so you would get this in the may document but do remember okay i hope guys you are not bored so far okay so we have completed one hour and we are not even halfway with the session don't worry i'm going to pick up the pace but i believe that if we are spending one hour here one or two hours then at least we should discuss something substantive okay आप लोगों को तो पहले से ही काफी कुछ आता है यू गाइज आर वेरी अप टू द मार्क पीडीएफ मिल जाएगी गाइज डोंट वरी अबाउट द पीडीएफ ओके चलिए द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट द नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी इज इंट्रोड्यूसिंग अ न्यू सिस्टम अंडर द आयुष्मान भारत प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य योजना टू मेजर द uh hospitals performance and the uh, measurement will be done on the value based care where payment will be outcome based and providers will be rewarded according to the quality of the treatment delivered on how many parameters will the hospitals be judged under the new system so here guys five is the right answer now one thing that you need not to remember all the five parameters because in my opinion those would not be asked in the examination okay but pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana is very important so i hope you have already covered this scheme thoroughly one more thing that i want to highlight here is that now the focus is being highlighted on the being given on the value based care okay which is very important to change the attitude of the government officials especially the uh, government hospital health care workers okay and also the private officials as well so in case you get any question on the pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana i am talking about the descriptive question you can mention this news as well and its implications on the healthcare sector and their accessibility next question is where has renew power installed india's first 3x platform wind turbine generators okay karnataka is the right answer no need to go into the depths this much is enough india's first 3x platform wind turbine generator karnataka bas that much is enough how much amount has been allocated for the new india literacy program for 5 years so here guys 1000 crore is the right answer which city hosted the first education group of uh, group meeting of g20 country so here guys chennai is the right answer and do remember as far as g20 meetings are concerned i have already told you this thing in one of the sessions previously prepare a fact sheet sheet where you are writing the venue of the meeting the theme of the meeting if it is there in any uh, in case and the result the outcome of the meeting okay because any of these things can be asked from you in the examination do not think like g20 meetings are very uh, there are very uh, there are many g20 meetings so the examiner would not ask the result or would not go into the depths of the g20 meetings do not think like that the examiner can ask you any of the outcomes of the g20 meeting okay 
if the outcome is relevant or substantial okay if they have just discussed about the normal things they are not going to ask you and i have already provided you the substantial and relevant things in the spotlight magazine so you can clearly rely upon the magazine only next question is which has become the first state in india to fully digitalize its banking services so here kerala is the right answer okay so thrissur is the district which has digitalized its banking services kerala is the state which has the first digitally literate panchayat uh, digitally literate district so can any one of you tell me that which district is that yes right to internet services of course so there is a legislation that was uh, they basically it's a bill right to internet services which has been approved by the kerala government jessica because these people have already covered the spotlight and they have already practiced practiced these questions from the spotlight magazine kolam absolutely right where is the bita bitar kanika national park located so guys odisha is the right answer so the, in this park there was some census uh, conducted that is why this park is important so remember odisha is the right answer indian navy collaborated with sagar defense engineering private limited for the development of armed autonomous boat swarms as part of the sprint initiative sprint initiative was launched in 2022 to promote the development and usage of indigenous defense technologies what does s stand for in the full form of sprint so here guys s stand for supporting now can any one of you tell me the full form of sprint what is the full form moving on to the next question where is india planning to deploy a platoon of female peacekeepers so it is on the border of uh, border between sudan and south sudan at present sudan is having a crisis and in order to evacuate indians from this country we have launched the operation kaveri okay so this is important to remember with which bank has iisc partnered to establish the center for mathematics and computing so it is axis bank union cabinet uh, has approved a historic decision to set up and promote the multi state seed cooperative society under the multi state cooperative societies act when did this act come into force so this act came into force in 2002 so it is a very important act do remember this thing and one more thing that is this multi state seed cooperative society is going to uh, basically work at every stage of the seed supply chain be it the procurement be it the uh, production be it the distribution of the particular quality seeds among the farmers so every kind of work will be taken care of by this cooperative society okay so that is also an important initiative as far as our agriculture uh, agriculture sector is concerned next question is union cabinet has approved in incentive scheme for promotion of rupee debit cards and low value bheem upi transactions in fy 22 to 23 under the scheme acquiring banks will be provided financial incentive for promoting point of sale and e-commerce transactions using rupee debit card and low value bheem upi transactions for the current financial year fy23 how much money would the government spend to ensure the widespread adoption of bheem upi and debit cards so the government has planned to spend rupees 2600 crores for the uh, spread of bheem upi and debit card to increase the awareness and uh, increase their usage in india 
ओके वन मोर थिंग दैट नाउ वी आर एट द डिजिटल पेमेंट्स सो आई रिमाइंडेड ऑफ वन थिंग दैट इज पी आई डी एफ दैट इज पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट फंड विच इज द गम इनिशियटिव ऑफ आर बी आई एंड सिंस इट इज दी आर बी आई एग्जामिनेशन यू कैन बी आस्ट ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज वेल सो क्विकली टेल मी वॉट इज द करंट कॉर्पज ऑफ पी आई डी एफ पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट फंड okay so as of december 2022 the corpus is 778 crore okay and this is validated by the rbi website only so do remember 778 crore rupees okay one more thing that we have payment sorry digital payment index released by rbi again this index is also prepared by rbi and it is released twice in a year march and september so what is the uh, i would say score of the digital payment index of september 2022 can any one of you tell me the score the score of india Three seventy-seven point four six is the score of India in the digital payment index for the month of September two thousand twenty-two. And as far as this index is concerned, so do remember there are a total of five indicators or parameters which are used to prepare for prepare this index. Okay, and what are those parameters? This is your task. Okay, quickly mention it in the comments. uh jessica you can get the spotlight through our website currentaffairs.anujindal.in you can download it from there where has the union minister of ports shipping and waterways and ayush sabarnanda sonowal inaugurated the school of logistics waterways and communication in the northeast so here guys tripura is the right answer who who has joined nasa as a chief technologist A C Charanya is the right answer, and he is of Indian origin. That's why it is important. Which of the following companies received the payment aggregators license from RBI in January 2023? So, Hitachi Payment and N Cash. These two have received the license. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. I hope all of you are aware of the recent guidelines related to the payment aggregators and the meaning of payment aggregators. Okay. which project aims to create shipping canal project in india that would connect the gulf of mannar and the park strait so here guys setu samundram is the right answer setu samundram setu is bridge samudra is sea okay so setu samundram project so here just have a look at this setu samundram project at present this is the adam bridge or the ram setu now there this setu samundram Uh, project aims to create a canal in between this bridge so that the ships can go through this route only and the travel time can be cut down okay at present the route is this and uh, the indian ships have to go through the sri lanka also so this is a same concept or the same dilemma which the us had also faced while creating the panama canal although there was not so much of a dilemma but in in our case it is a dilemma because here religious sentiments are also attached to this particular bridge okay so question number 57 established in june 2020 the in space is a single window autonomous agency uh, that aims to give level playing field to the private sector and currently it is chaired by p pawan k goenka Recently, it has signed an MOU with an agency for technical collaboration for development of various geographic information system applications. What is the name of the agency? The agency's name is Nascent Info Technologies. Now, remember, guys, I can read the question in haste because I have prepared the question myself. I have prepared for the session, but don't do this, guys, with yourself, especially in the examination or attempting mocks. Please read the complete question carefully. Okay. i am doing it because we are now running short on time uh 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी एट इज रिसेंटली राइट हैज साइंड एन एम ओ यू विद दी आई आई टी फॉर म्यूचुअल असिस्टेंस एंड कोऑपरेशन टू स्ट्रेंदन एंड डेवलप अ सस्टेनेबल फ्यूचर बाय ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग टू ग्रीन ग्रीन सेक्टर बेसिकली राइट इज अ मिनी रत्न कैटेगरी वन शेड्यूल ए सेंट्रल पब्लिक सेक्टर एंटरप्राइज अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रेलवेज सो बेसिकली विद विच एम ओ यू हैज दिस सॉरी विद विच आई टी हैज दिस एम ओ यू बीन साइंड सो द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी आई आई टी कानपुर now guys here you have got this mini ratna word here so let me inform you that the mini ratna status can be conferred by the ministry itself okay so for example the ministry of railways has conferred this mini ratna status upon rights but for the maharatna and navratna status the department of public enterprises gives this status okay which is under the ministry of finance at present so do remember this fact this is a very basic fact recently indian high commission has signed an mou to establish a hindi chair at the sabra uh, sabragmuva university where is the university located so the university is located in sri lanka which has become the first country to launch the hockey verse a meta for a metaverse platform for the hockey tournament so here guys india is the right answer Hockey India has launched it because we are going to host the Asia uh, Men Hockey Tournament. Okay, so for that we have launched this Hockey Verse platform so that the people who are not able to come to India uh, to attend this World Tournament they can enjoy the same kind of feeling uh, as the people who would be sitting in the stadium will have through this MetaVerse platform. okay so that is the basic idea so do remember hockey india has launched this hockey verse okay as per a newspaper article published in january 2023 india has collaborated with dash to establish a new working group to build sustainable supply chains and boost the bilateral trade so what is the right answer it is usa okay now do remember that india has already established a supply chain resilience initiative with japan and australia okay so we have japan and australia in the supply chain resilience initiative now india has bilaterally established this new working group with us okay so agar hum india ke point of view se dekhe so india has co collaborated with japan with australia with us for the supply chain resilience okay and we all know where does this come from because of the covid the supply chains were blocked and disrupted and now the government the governments of the world are waking up to this cause that we should have st uh, strong supply chains and we should have multiple channels okay we should not only rely upon one country like china so if we look at from india's perspective india has joined all the three nations as far as the supply chain resilience is concerned and this equation is equals to the quad grouping okay so these all are the members of quad do remember which state has collaborated with indian army for the soul of steel challenge so this is basically a triathlon okay so it is uttarakhand can any one of you tell me the current chief of the indian army who is the current chief of indian army quickly tell me yes aukas does not include india because india would not be able to contribute in the aukas also because in aukas the nuclear submarines for australia are going to be developed and we do not have that much capability to develop it for the other country okay uh guys i have asked you the chief of the indian army who is the person bilkul pande ji manoj pande which country has announced its plan to establish a global south center of excellence to undertake research on development solutions for developing countries so it is a very proud thing for india because we have established uh, we have basically announced our plans to establish the global south center of excellence so the right answer is india okay now the global south term i hope it reminds you of the g77 grouping 
but do not be in this misconception that this grouping contains only 77 nations now the number has increased beyond 100 okay so we have many nations in the g7 grouping can any one of you tell me when was this grouping established quickly tell me when was the g7 grouping established good evening ssc struggler very interesting name Which company has developed India's first 5G enabled drone named Skyhawk that is capable of vertical takeoff and landing? Okay, so it is IG drones. Okay. In the field of drones, also we have many uh, innovative technologies coming up in the market. For example, parachute drones are also there, and now we have vertical takeoff and vertical landing uh, drone. And remember, it is India's first 5G enabled vertical landing and takeoff drone and name is Skyhawk. Where will India's first center of excellence in online gaming be established to help startups from the northeastern region to build the next generation online gaming apps and softwares. So here guys, Shillong is the right answer. Okay. Where was the two day long Think 20 meeting of G20 grouping held? So, Bhopal is the right answer. Where is the first, uh, which is the first district ever in India for on ground implementation of ground breaking 5G use cases proposed by startup? So, here guys, Vidisha, which is a district in Madhya Pradesh, okay, it has launched the 5G use cases, okay which is basically a sandbox kind of a environment okay so here the startups are going to test their new technologies okay in the beta version so harsh is the special education program of which state so it is guys tripura okay and in saharsh saharsh means with happiness okay so in this particular education programs the emotional and social well-being of the child is also being taken care of which state has implemented the first ever policy for blindness control in the country to ensure the right to sight? So it is the same state which has also passed the bill right to health, approved the bill. Okay, right now the doctors are pro protesting against this bill in the said state. So we cannot say that it will become a legislation or not. But do remember that right to health bill is also propagated by the same state and that state is Rajasthan. Okay, right to sight, right to health. Okay, where is the India Indian Coast Guard ship Kamla Devi Commission? So, what is the right answer here? Kolkata is the right answer, and uh, GRSE has developed the Kamla Devi ship. That's why the manufacturer can also be asked. With which country has India signed? MOU for green hydrogen development in January 2023. So, UAE. So, we have the National Hydrogen Mission in the same month. We have the MOU with UAE also for the development of green hydrogen. Recently, India has announced to eliminate the lymphatic phalluses by 2027, three years ahead of the global target through mission mode. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia made this announcement during the National Symposium on India's Roadmap to Eliminate Lymphatic Feralysis. The roadmap outlines a dash approach. So it is a five-pronged approach. Again, no need to remember these five steps or the five prongs which will be used in this roadmap because nobody is going to ask you that. But, but a very important and crucial information is this. That is the disease elimination targets of India. So, leprosy was set to be eliminated in 2005, but at present we have a way, I can say that the burden of leprosy in India is quite high. Kala Azar fever 2023, this current year is the target year for the elimination of this particular disease and it can become a direct question in the exam, okay. 2023 is the elimination year of which of the following disease. So, then the answer would be Kala Azar. TB 2025. Lymphatic phalluresis or elephantiasis 
2027 malaria 2030 aids 2030 and with respect to aids we aim to uh, eliminate its epidemic which company has signed a 3 billion euro contract to supply and service freight trains in india the largest ever order since it is the largest ever order that's why it is important so which com company is this it is simons which is a german company okay so do remember okay as far as the freight corridors are important so do remember dedicated freight corridors are being developed in india and uh, this is the list of those dedicated freight corridors okay so we have a total of 6 dedicated freight corridors and this picture is from wikipedia okay so clearly we cannot completely rely on the facts given here so length pe aap isko focus mat kijiye okay don't remember the numbers but definitely this fact is correct okay so western dfc eastern east west north south east coast southern dfc so we are first, first of all developing freight corridors for managing the logistics okay for reducing the logistics cost the target of reducing the logistic cost is to 10% from 14% at present under the national logistic policy 2021 okay we are also developing the industrial corridors okay and these industrial corridors are going to be 11 in number and we have defense industrial corridors which are uh, being developed in two states uttar pradesh and tamil nadu okay so these are the different corridors india is developing uh, across the nation so do remember government e marketplace launched womenia on gem initiative to empower the women entrepreneurs and women self help groups to sell their products directly to various government ministries departments and institutions the initiative is represented by artwork magan an illustration of women empowerment and grace by whom so here anukta m ghosh is the right answer okay now uh, this is the gem initiative which was launched in 2016 efficient transparent and inclusiveness these are the pillars of the gem portal which country has launched the world's first agri focused satellite so south africa is the right answer the name of the satellite is agri sat very easy name to remember and dragonfly spacecraft company is the launching company of this particular satellite which bank of russia has launched the direct payment in rupees to boost the bilateral trade and investments in january 2023 okay so pay attention to this fact that here the particular month is asked month is mentioned in the question uh, itself that means that the particular bank which has conducted this transaction in this month has been asked from you okay and that bank is vtb bank first of all these two banks are different and both of these are the russian banks and even all these banks are the russian banks okay so we have, here we are talking about the vtb bank which conducted the direct payments in rupees for the trade okay now with respect to this direct payment in rupees and the russian payment and everything i hope you are aware about the vostro accounts okay which russian banks have opened here in india there is an african nation which has recently got the approval from rbi to open a vostro account can you name that nation which nation is this a uh, hundred questions are there nimish and we are about to end the session so don't worry you have to have a little bit of patience okay tanzania absolutely right nilesh tanzania is the country remember tanzania okay and remember the static facts related to tanzania uh recently the first ever district good governance index has been released by the union home minister in jammu which of the following statements are not true about the index 
इट हैज बिन रिलीज बाय जम्मू कश्मीर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन विद डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रिफॉर्म्स एंड पब्लिक ग्रीवियंसेस एंड लद्दाख एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इंडेक्स हैज 10 गवर्नेंस सेक्टर्स 18 इंडिकेटर्स 139 डेटा पॉइंट्स जम्मू डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉलोड बाय डोडा संबा पुलवामा श्रीनगर आर द टॉप पॉइंट्स सो व्हिच वन इज नॉट करेक्ट सो हियर गाइस टू स्टेटमेंट्स आर नॉट करेक्ट फर्स्ट इज दिस 16 डेटा पॉइंट्स Okay, I'm not sure on this number. I guess it was either 114 or 116. Please check the numbers here. Okay, once the session is over, you can check these numbers. Okay, I'm again saying check the numbers of the district good governance index because currently I'm forgetting the numbers. Okay, the third statement is that it has been topped by Jammu district followed by these districts. This sentence is correct, and these two statements are not correct. Okay, so our right answer is option C. Now here, guys, uh, you have been given the ten governance sectors, and do remember, state good governance index, which is prepared at the national level, okay, has been taken as the model for this district good governance index. Okay, so the entire structure of this index has been copied in the district good governance index. And one more thing that this state good governance index is released on a particular day, that is Good Governance Day, December. Twenty-five. Okay. Uh, good governance day. The birth anniversary of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, and it is not December twenty-five. Okay, one hundred sixteen is right. Nilesh is saying one hundred sixteen is right. Can you please also confirm me the date of the Good Governance Day? When do we celebrate the Good Governance Day? Yes, fifty-eight indicators. Okay, so I wrote it wrongly. Fifty-eight indicators are there. Okay, I will upload the PDF on the Telegram channel. Okay, twenty-five December. कोई होता है. Okay, तो Christmas पे, I mean, Christmas और Good Governance Day साथ साथ पढ़ते हैं. Okay, सही है. Yes, spotlight is free. Yes, with Christmas. So, अब से Santa के साथ साथ अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी को भी हम celebrate करेंगे, okay? Or we can have the picture of अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी wearing a Santa cap. Okay. The next question is: Aditya Birla Health Insurance Company has signed a bank assurance agreement with Punjab and Sindh Bank for health insurance distribution. Aditya Birla Health Insurance is a joint venture between Aditya Birla Group and MMI Holdings. Which country does the MMI holding belong to? So South Africa is the right answer. Now this I would consider a very difficult question. Okay, but nevertheless, you have to cover such questions to prepare. Uh, sorry, to clear the examination. Okay, and to be there on the seat. Recently, RBI has proposed a framework for adoption of an expected. loss based approach for provisioning by banks in india as per the framework the banks are required to classify their financial assets primarily loans including irrevocable loan commitments and investment classified as held to maturity and available for sale into one of the dash categories depending upon the assessed credit losses on them at the time of initial recognition as well as on each subsequent reporting date and make necessary provisions so what is the right answer the right answer is 3 okay so this particular framework divides the uh financial asset categories into three parts okay three types of categories are there and this framework <clears throat> is very very important for both the phases okay do prepare this framework thoroughly and kanima ma'am has beautifully explained the framework in one of her rbi 247 videos so watch that video as well national awards were given to 82 best agri preneurs who were trained under the central sector scheme which is agri clinics and agri businesses of the government of india for their significant contribution to farmers uh, through agri clinic and agri business services This scheme is a make mega flagship scheme that aims to transform unemployed youth into self-employed agripreneurs through a 45-day free residential training at different part of the country, with the provision of availing loan and subsidy from banks. Which agencies spearheading this initiative? Out of all these agencies, which 
is the most probable answer the right answer is nabat obviously okay so ye aapko yaad rakhna hai sports authority of india and the indian railways have established their national center for excellence which, where is the center located so west bengal exact location is kuch bihar west bengal okay guys don't worry we are about to finish finish the center and wo kehte hai na jab subah nikalne wali hoti hai usse pehle ki raat sabse zyada dark hoti hai and it happens in real life also when you are closest to your destination tabhi aapki himmat tootne lagti hai to please apni himmat ko mat todo kyunki session khatam hi hone wala hai so you have to be here till uh, 15 to 20 minutes okay just itna hi time lagega what is the outlay of the scheme for financial support for project development expenses of the ppp projects uh, india infrastructure project development fund scheme for 2022 to 23 to fy25 so 150 crore is the right answer by which year will the entire country be developed uh, we covered under the network of doppler weather radar so here guys 2025 is the right answer so these are the do doppler weather radars okay and what do they do they basically uh, uh assess the precipitation okay and they inform about the rate of precipitation ba basically the rainfall okay and if the rainfall increases a beyond increases beyond a threshold then obviously it is very dangerous so these radars are used to uh used as early warning system for the disasters for prevention of disasters okay and the government has planned to cover the entire nation with the doppler weather radars by 2025 and majorly one more thing that majorly these radars are used for the agricultural purposes because agar rainfall zyada ho gaya to bhi crop kharab hai kam hoga to bhi crop kharab hai so these radars are specifically for the precipitation assessment so they are used in agriculture widely how many district agro meteorological units will be established by 2025 again a very important question so 660 units will be established by the year okay which ut has declared the whole union territory as a free area for the purposes of prevention and control of infectious and contagious diseases in animals act 2009 so here guys jnk is the right answer again no need to go into the depths of this news because in my opinion that is not required and that is not a part of your syllabus as well with which companies should be has should be signed an mou in january 2023 to extend loans to the msme sector so vfs capital is the right answer which bank signed an mou with warehousing development and regulatory authority to provide loans against the electronic negotiable warehouse receipts issued by the wra registered warehouses so here sbi is the right answer नाउ अगर आप इसको थोड़ा सा समझ जाओगे तो आई थिंक इट विल बी इजियर फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ एस बी आई ओके सो बेसिकली फार्मर्स प्रोड्यूस देयर गुड्स एंड दे स्टोर इट इन द वेयर हाउसेज ओके एंड इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ दे आर स्टोरेज दे आर स्टोर गुड्स दे गेट अ रिसीट ओके एंड नाउ वॉट द न्यूज इज सेंग दैट एस बी आई इज गोइंग टू गिव लोन against these receipts okay so these receipts are like the home papers okay house papers jaise hote hai na aapke so against those mortgages you get the loan okay so the produce which is stored at the warehouses that produce will work as a mortgage and against that mortgage the sbi is going to give loans to the farmer so it is nothing but another way to make the credit accessible to the farmers okay so i hope that this initiative is clear and now it helps you in remembering this news and this mou okay and this is a very important initiative and one of its kind that has been signed uh rbi has released the master directions on uh, rb reserve bank of india acquisition and holding of shares or voting rights in banking companies directions 2023 again very important as per the directions any person who intends to make an acquisition which is likely to result in major shareholding in a banking company 
is required to seek previous approval of the reserve bank in this context major shareholding means aggregate holding of dash percent or more of the paid up share capital or voting rights in a banking company by a person okay so the answer is five percent okay so if a person wants to increase or buy share which is above five percent then that person or company has to take the prior permission of rbi okay because five percent is significant share in a banking company okay now i hope that you must have covered these uh, directions thoroughly and in case you haven't done so far please cover these directions uh, in these are provided in spotlight in rbi 247 and karnima ma'am again has very beautifully explained these directions so watch her video as well okay next question is which payment bank has recently received final approval from the reserve bank of india to operate as a pay, uh, sorry as a bharat bill payment operating unit under the bharat bill payment system so here paytm payment bank is the right answer okay so basically under this system now you will be able to pay your electricity phone bill dth bill water gas insurance loan repayments fast tag recharge recharge education fees credit card bill municipal taxes by using your paytm account also okay so this is the basic meaning of this integration or this approval basically RBI has recently released the state finances a study of budgets of 2022 to 23 report on the theme of capital formation of india the role of states as per the report the gross fiscal deficit of states is budgeted to narrow to dash of the gdp in fy23 from 4.1% in 2020 to 2021 so the right answer is 3.4% okay now one more thing that uh, the government has uh, recently launched basically last year the government had launched the scheme to increase the capital expenditure of the states and the budget of uh, that scheme was 10 lakh crore okay now related to this particular scheme the update is that it has been extended for one more year okay 2023 to 2024 do remember this and cover this Theme thoroughly. Uh, sorry, scheme thoroughly. Which country has assumed the presidency of the thirteenth assembly of the India International Renewable Energy Agency? So India is the right answer. Ministry of Minority Affairs has discontinued the Padho Pradesh scheme. Which bank used to be the nodal agency of the scheme? So here Canara Bank is the right answer. where is the first g20 health working group meeting held so tiruvananthapuram is the right answer who has become the first women pilot of the indian air force to lead in in an air combat exercise so avni chaturvedi is the right answer which country inaugurated the eu's first mainland orbital launch complex so sweden is the right answer which country discovered the world's oldest dated rune stone so here norway is the right answer What is the global unemployment rate in 2023 as per the ILO's World Employment and Social Outlook report? So 5.8 percent is the right answer. According to this report, in 2023 the employment rate. Remember, employment rate is expected to increase to one percent. Okay, basically by one percent. So there will be an increment in the employment rate in this year 2023, and the unemployment rate would be at 5.8 percent. And in my opinion, these facts are important. which can be asked in the examination from this particular report okay as per the isa report dash percent of students in the age bracket of 6 to 14 years are now enrolled in these schools so here guys uh, option b 98.4% is the right answer now i hope aapko ye pata hai that in article 21 of the indian constitution which is the right to life okay under this article we have one clause 21a which provides right to education or i should say which mentions right to education as a fundamental right okay and we have the right to education act as well which uh, makes sure that the education is provided freely to the 
एज ग्रुप टू द चिल्ड्रन इन द एज ग्रुप ऑफ सिक्स टू फोर्टीन ईयर्स ओके सो इन लाइट ऑफ दीज डेवलपमेंट्स दिस नंबर इज नॉट अ वेरी शॉकिंग और सरप्राइजिंग नंबर एंड एक्चुअली इट इज अ वेरी गुड नंबर हाउ एवर द फोकस शुड बी ऑन इंक्रीजिंग द एनरोलमेंट रेट एंड द हायर एजुकेशन एंड इन द सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन ऑन दैट नोट टेल मी द ग्रॉस एनरोलमेंट रेशियो फॉर द स्कूल्स एज पर द एन ई पी ओके द टारगेट एज पर द एन ई पी क्विकली टेल मी Thank you so much, SSC struggler. Hundred <laughs> percent by twenty thirty. Absolutely right. Okay, so. ये क्वेश्चन आपके आई एफ एस सी ए के पेपर में था दिस टाइम इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इन आई एफ एस सी ए पेपर वन देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन द ग्रॉस एनरोलमेंट रेशियो इन हायर एजुकेशन ओके द यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल एजुकेशन ओके सो एन ई पी इज वेरी क्रूशियल ऑल दीज टॉपिक बेस्ड आई वुड से करंट अफेयर्स कह लो या फिर रिपोर्ट्स कह लो ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सो इसको प्लीज कवर करना है नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी को कभी भी पूछा जा सकता है आपसे किसी भी फेज में पूछा जा सकता है और कुछ भी पूछा जा सकता है इसमें से ओके सो प्रिपेयर दी एन ई विच कंपनी हैज अनाउंस टू लॉन्च इट्स गर्ल्स फॉर टेक्स स्टेम एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम सो मास्टर कार्ड इज दी राइट आंसर मास्टर कार्ड लॉन्च इज मेनी प्रोग्राम इन इंडिया ओके सो लास्ट क्वेश्चन विद विच बैंक हैज स्टील अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया साइंड एन एम यू टू प्रोवाइड फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस टू द डीलर ऑफ सेल अक्रॉस द कंट्री सो यर साउथ इंडियन बैंक इज दी राइट आंसर सो थैंकफुली वी हैव कंप्लीटेड दी हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे नाउ आई एम ओपन फॉर योर क्वेरीज इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरीज यू कैन आस्क मी योर I hope you guys are strictly following the timetable and preparing according to uh, according to that timetable which we have given to you. Yes, Mehak. Uh, in my opinion. इट वुड बी इनफ ओके आर बी आई टू फोर सेवन है पी आई बी टू फोर सेवन है एंड स्पॉट लाइट है बस इससे ज्यादा आप डिटेन भी नहीं कर पाओगे सो डोंट गो फॉर टू मैनी सोर्सेज ओके इट विल रूइन योर चांसेज ऑफ गेटिंग इन टू दी आर बी आई बिकॉज नाउ द टाइम इज वेरी लेस ओके सो जस्ट फोकस ऑन वो रिटेनिंग वॉट यू हैव लर्न थैंक यू सो मच गाइज फॉर योर एप्रिसिएशन अगर आप को कोई डाउट है आपकी प्रिपरेशन में या इफ़ यू हैव एनी थिंग एनी थिंग इज देयर विद यू दैट यू वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस विद मी आई एम योर ओपन फॉर योर क्वेरीज एंड फॉर योर चिट चैट सो यू कैन डिस्कस विद मी एज वेल उदय देखो जितने भी करंट अफेयर्स होते हैं दो हज़ार कवर्ड इन स्पॉट लाइट ओके एंड करंट अफेयर्स जो है जितने हैं उतने ही हैं आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके सो फ्रॉम दोज करंट अफेयर्स यू जस्ट नीड टू पिक द इंश्योरेंस रिलेटेड न्यूज़ विच आर कवर्ड इन द मैगजीन ऑफ स्पॉट लाइट एंड आर बी आई टू फोर सेवन ओके एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम देयर आई डोंट थिंक दैट यू हैव टू गो फॉर अ स्पेसिफिक मैगजीन और अ स्पेसिफिक वेबसाइट और द आई आर डी एज वेबसाइट मुझे नहीं लगता आपको उतना जाने की ज़रूरत है एज फार एज दी करंट अफेयर्स आर कंसर्न with regards to IRDI but yes if you go out and uh, look on the website of IRDI then it would be a good thing okay IRDI ki website pe aap dekh sakte ho but oh, don't uh, try to mug up the guidelines and the frameworks which I IRDI releases okay because sometimes they get too technical and those are not asked in the examination so you just have to be very cautious while picking up the sources Uh, Tara, according to me, this 
content is uh, sufficient okay you can rely on this only and in case you want to study more you can pick up the newspaper okay because that will help that will increase your speed of reading as well so it is going to help you newspaper utha sakte ho iske alawa aur koi website uthane ki zarurat nahi hai a uh, jan to june important hai because parth उससे पीछे का नहीं आएगा एंड वी हैव सीन दिस ट्रेंड दैट आर बी एस टिक्स टू थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स मेजरली सेवेंटी टू एटी परसेंट थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स में से बनता है ठीक है पेपर तो आपको जैन से जून के ही करंट अफेयर्स करने हैं और फ्रॉम मार्च ऑनवर्ड्स एवरी न्यूज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है चाहे कुछ भी हो चाहे फिर वो मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन हो या कुछ भी हो कोई सी भी फालतू न्यूज हो बट वो न्यूज इंपॉर्टेंट है अगर वो मार्च से जून के बीच में आई है तनवी द टाइम टेबल हैज़ बिन प्रोवाइडेड टू यू एंड ऑल द लेक्चर्स विल बी डन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट टाइम टेबल बट डोंट वरी इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरी और एनी थिंग इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड आई एम योर टू हेल्प यू डिस्कशन फोरम इज देयर फॉर यू टू हेल्प यू कैन पुट योर क्वेरी देयर ओके स्पेसिफिक सेशन स्टैटिक अवेयरनेस का राइट नाउ आई कैन नॉट कमिट टू दैट ओके वी विल सी इफ द इफ देयर वुड बी एनी काइंड ऑफ स्कोप फॉर फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी then i will take the static awareness session as well okay very interesting question shivam has asked which reports and surveys are to cover first of all the topic based annual reports and surveys for example budget economic survey your acer report the in state of forest report such kind of topic based current affairs first of all you need to cover them and as far as the current reports which are released are concerned so pick the spotlight from january onwards and just choose the reports and indices section and from those from that section cover the current indices and reports okay for the phase 1 only sabhi type ki schemes ke liye outlays important hote hain pritam bhattacharya okay shubham is asking me where i get this pdf can i attempt this 100 question in quiz format in the portal yes all these questions are provided to you in the daily quizzes of january so you can attempt those quizzes and we have already we have already made three mock test live okay so you can attempt the mock test as well uh in this week you will get the april spotlight uh Yes, Tanvi. Uh, you need to remember such things. Ki, uh, I guess you are asking me Ramsar sites of India, currency and capital of different nations and international organizations. Okay, don't go for the Ramsar sites of the country which is in the news. Okay, such type of questions would not be asked because then your syllabus would be too much. And RBI also understands that you are humans, not machines. uh we have specialized and very uh, i would say adapt personalities for that we have very experienced mentors for pib 247 and rbi 247 so we are going to conduct the marathon for both these magazines manish sir is going to take the pib 247 and kanima ma'am is going to take the rbi 247 marathon spotlight padni bahut zaruri hai anshuman we have uh, to read spotlight or these sessions are enough for phase 1 so let me tell you all those people who are listening to me right now you have to read spotlight this is just a revision and revision is done only when you have covered the base right so base to aapko padhna hi padega spotlight ko aap skip nahi kar sakte uh malik next ne lecture i guess 8 may part 2 a uh, mentorship i guess is uh, with the crash course so if you have already taken our course then there is no fees if you want to enroll in the sessions then i guess you have to um, take the crash course uh, nevertheless you can talk to our counseling team and i am just putting out the number here in the comments okay in the live chat you can talk to the counseling team regarding the men's mentorship sessions okay so there is a very interesting question abhishek has asked me is sports section important yes of course you are asked very in depth questions from the sports sections also okay 
जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू कन्फर्म इफ आई ओनली रेफर टू मंथली पी डी एफ इंस्टेड ऑफ डेली इफ आई विल बी मिसिंग आउट ऑन एनी फैक्ट नो पूर्णिमा ऑल दो ऑन दी अदर हैंड आई वुड से कि मंथली मैगजीन इज अ मोर रिफाइंड वर्जन ऑफ द डेली करंट सो इफ यू गेट द मंथली मैगजीन स्विच टू दैट एंड प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम द मंथली मैगजीन बट फॉर द करंट मंथ ऑफ मे यू हैव टू रिलाय ऑन द डेली करंट बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट प्रोवाइड यू द मंथली मैगजीन इवन बिफोर द मंथ इज कम्प्लीटेड ठीक है तो मंथली मैगजीन इज आई वुड से रिफाइंड वर्जन आप उस पर रिलाय कर सकते हो Ishani, if I give you the compilation of all the G20 meetings, it would be like another PDF for you that you will have to mug up. And उसके लिए आपको बहुत मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी याद करने के लिए But if you prepare the G20 magazines with your hand in your notes, then automatically your mind will register that uh, writing and your mind will be able to retain those G20 meetings. Okay? So it would be of no use if I give you the document. Uh, notes तो आपको खुद ही बनाने चाहिए Again, Prashant, uh, to, uh, Prashant is asking, are two hundred questions enough? So let me tell you, Prashant, two hundred questions are just used for your revision. Okay, so revision के लिए these questions are enough. But yes, आपको spotlight पूरी पढ़नी पड़ेगी. You cannot replace the session with the spotlight. Yes, spotlight is enough. Okay. Shubham Gadia has asked a very important question. Should I fully devote time to phase one now or little bit of phase two side by side? नहीं भाई सिर्फ फेज वन नहीं पढ़ना है फेज टू भी करना है बिकॉज फेज टू के लिए आपके पास सिर्फ ट्वेंटी डेज का ही टाइम है तो आपको फेज टू की भी प्रिपरेशन करनी है एंड वी हैव गिवन यू द टाइम टेबल ताकि आपका हैसल कम हो कि हमें क्या पढ़ना चाहिए क्या नहीं पढ़ना चाहिए उसमें बहुत ही क्लियरली मैंशन है कि वीक वन में आपको क्या करना है वॉट यू हैव टू डू इन द वीक टू एंड वीक थ्री सो फॉलो द टाइम टेबल ओके बट डेफिनेटली डोंट वेस्ट योर टू मंथ्स ओनली ऑन द फेज वन दिस इज द वेरी क्रूशल टाइम थैंक यू निमिश फॉर वरिंग अबाउट मी बट माई प्राइमरी जॉब इज टू असिस्ट माई स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज माई जॉब सो दिस इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी so let me just resolve your doubts and then i will wind up the session how to revise the current affairs section in short time continuously reading uh, the magazine okay and again i would say prepare your own notes notes banaye bagair aap kaise yaad karoge aap book padhte ho to usme se bhi to notes banate ho sari ki sari book aap kaise padhoge hai na to bhai short notes mein bhi aapke only the facts should be there okay it's it should not be like that you have copy pasted the entire news in your notes wo nahi karna hai bas facts hone chahiye yes if uh, uh, vibe with mayank uh, yes mayank if you read the spotlight before coming to the session it would be very very enriching experience for you in the session अगर मैं पूरी स्पॉटलाइट आपको पढ़ाने बैठ जाऊंगी तो फिर एक दिन चाहिए उसके लिए पूरा और वो भी सिर्फ एक महीने की स्पॉटलाइट के लिए बिकॉज द कंटेंट इज टू मच एंड यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ दिस इज फैक्चुअल इन नेचर ओके अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाले पार्ट को आई विल ट्राई टू टीच यू इन द सेशन इट ओके चलिए ओके बाय बाय गाइज हैव अ गुड डे एंड प्रिपेयर रियली हार्ट